Hi, my name is Corinne Masai, and we are live here at Hims 2022 down in Florida. It's super exciting, right? <laughs> Finally, to be live someplace, it's great. And Florida's not a bad place to be live, by the way. That is very true, especially I just came from where it was snowing. It was terrible. And I'm joined here with Jason. Jason, go ahead and uh, give a little introduction about yourself. Absolutely. Uh, really uh, honored to be on Veeam Live now for the first time. Uh, I'm Jason Werner. I'm with our global product marketing team, and I work with uh, all of our vertical marketing solutions and go-to-market uh, plans. And I came from snowy Salt Lake City, so believe me, showing up in Florida uh, and actually seeing people for the first time in, in a long time is great. So to kick off, I want to let everyone know, we've already told you where we're at. We want you to head over where you're viewing us from and post in chat where you are so we can start to fill out our map we our map is officially back the We're map is back light up as much as we can green uh so far we have georgia florida and i think we have one over in yeah. europe here romania yep Where's more to come well like i said post wherever you're looking from uh we're on youtube right now linkedin and twitter it's very exciting. So tell us, what's the theme of the show? So uh, hymns this year, uh, this is the second pandemic hymns, if you will. And it's the first time that everybody's been back. And certainly the theme of the show uh, matches everyone's attitude. And that's, it's great to be back. The official tagline is reimagining healthcare. Yeah. And I mean, that's appropriate. Who could have imagined what healthcare went through the last two years? I, I can't. I've spoke to some people that say unless they have to go in for a physical, they will never go and sit in front of a doctor again. It's just too inconvenient at this point. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. I had during the pandemic, uh, I had two parents uh, go through cancer treatment and a relative also break a hip. Oh. And, you know, at the worst time in the world, but it was amazing to see how quickly healthcare changed almost on a dime instantly. Uh, and and so that reimagined theme is, is very prevalent, and everyone is talking in context of how things were two years ago and how we can take it forward in the future, um, and getting back to normal. But it's not going to be normal ever again, is it? It's, it's just a new age, I'd say. It, and it's a better age. Um, I would agree. Yeah, data. So during ahead. the pandemic, uh, overnight it seemed we had to move a lot of services online, figure out how to do things virtually. And the forefront, if I'm not correct, of everyone's mind was to get it up, not to make sure it's protected, right? A, a lot of that. It was it was a mad scramble. Every, I think everyone in, in healthcare had long-term a vision for telehealth, being able to integrate better patient experiences, being able to exchange data better, more efficiency, uh, and obviously the outcome for all healthcare um, delivered IT services is to help the practitioners, the clinicians, a research to deliver better patient outcomes. Yeah. They want us to be healthier. But that huge pivot, literally on a dime, when the pandemic hit that shut down everything, really forced the hand of IT to step up in a big way. So there, for instance, telehealth. You and I have been doing conference calls and video conference calls for 15 years, <laughs> 20 years. It was about all. <laughs> I've been doing teleconference calls for more than 15 years All right. uh, but you grew up with it i mean you entered it with it being the normal mode of operation yep. and healthcare knew they needed to get there they wanted to get there um notoriously tight on budgets and the pandemic was that great forcing function that accelerated all of those plans and implementations and they literally i think had their finger poised on a lot of these great changes and the pandemic is what shut you know what what made them touch the button or in many cases just slam it out of out of sheer necessity so hymns the healthcare convention of pretty much the year i would say correct i walk into this building and i got my morning walk getting from the entrance of registration over to where our booth is our expo hall is tremendous like i have not seen this many people at a single location in two years now it, it goes forever impressive it, it does go forever um, and it's really, it's amazing how much technology is a theme. This is a healthcare uh, uh, event, but technology is the underlying theme by far. So I have exciting news. Okay. We have our first map ready. Let's go ahead and get that pulled up. Right. 
Let's see who's joining in. We'll start off with the Americas, Ohio, New York, Atlanta, and Alabama are go. on with us so far. Keeping Don't forget to keep posting in chat uh, where you're from. We'll move over to Europe. We got Switzerland, the Netherlands, Ireland, go. and Romania, of course. Green, you are a master of geography. By the way, this, <laughs> she's not going off a cheat sheet. This is this is this is right off the top of her head. And now we have Argentina yeah. over here, and I think I see uh, Egypt up there. Fantastic. Great. All right. Uh, let's move on to our first main topic here, uh, the catch-up game that we seem to be yeah. playing based off the numbers that we're seeing out in the field. Absolutely. The, um, the I, I would say one of the underlying conversations I've had with, with um, healthcare providers, with systems uh, managers, uh, with, with customers and our partners is this is the year of catch-up in healthcare. Everything got accelerated. It happened so quickly. They they did it safely. They had plans for it. But a lot of times what they put into place wasn't fully baked to the level that they wanted. They didn't go through all the testing. Um, the, everyone very much uh, stresses that precautions for HIPAA, for data security, encryption, all those things were in place, but it was the processes around. Uh, that really caught them off guard, that they've had to really catch up this year. And so I think there's going to be a lot of data quality management uh, committees being made up of several functional organizations within the ITs. But you just don't think about this. You have actual data and statistics. Let's hop right into yeah. some of these statistics that we have uh, going from our data protection report. Am you, I correct? You bet. You guys lost a couple weeks of your life trying to make sure this was right for everyone. <laughs> we did. And this is a little preview. So yes. tomorrow I'm going to publish a blog on Veeam.com. And we're going to have an executive brief that goes through just the healthcare cut of our annual data protection trends uh, report. And if you haven't seen it, uh, it's out there today. The full report, the global numbers are there. But we had enough participation in healthcare that that we we took some cuts. Uh, this this should not surprise anyone in um, in healthcare. But cost management and economics are a huge driver in everything that healthcare does in IT. Uh, we ask a simple question: What are some of the things that would that would prompt you, that would drive change within your organization for for data protection? Twenty five percent of the response responses were around economics versus improving the quality, for instance, or moving faster or expanding. The number one driver for change in data protection is cost. That's not the same for finance or glo or the global number. All right, that's really interesting. So a couple of other things. Um, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, to read the data protection report, uh, definitely take a look at it. One of the things that we've studied over the years is what Veeam calls the the reality gap. You may have heard Veeam talk about the protection gap or the availability gap. Uh, and the next slide will, will call out uh, two interesting things. So number one, this availability gap and protection gap. Now those are the differences between whether IT can deliver what an organization requires uh, for either uh, restoring on time or the amount of data or how soon they can restore. Okay. Um, surprisingly, that gap continues to widen. So in general, we're doing worse. Uh, so to clarify, the reality gap is the difference between the availability and the actual protection that's happening? Or? Yeah, think of it as two kind of measures. The availability gap is how fast an IT department can restore productivity. Okay. So that's how is the data available? The protection. Uh, in, in other words, how much data is lost? And are you meeting the system, the, the service level agreements that you should be? Uh, and both those numbers are getting worse. I mean, that's that's the overall thing. They're getting worse in general. And in healthcare, they're actually worse than the global numbers. And they're worse than other than other industries. Huh. So healthcare does have a problem. It's got to get a little bit more healthy on being able to deliver data protection and availability. That's that's a, a, a you know my my number one point. Um, go to the next slide. Something else that we looked at was ransomware. Ransomware and cybersecurity is the underlying kind of muffled tone in in a lot of cases uh, or or a theme that we're that we're hearing people talk about. I'm just going to pause real quick. Yeah. 76% of the participants said they had one or more. Or more. Ransomware attacks in the last year. Yeah. 
I get the conversation all the time. Like, we're not big enough. We're a small company. No one cares. No, our mom and pop doctor shops. And unfortunately, that's not the case based off of these numbers, right? That is correct. And when it hits healthcare, it's catastrophic. Um, When you're talking with patients, uh, patient records, the charts, the records, the, the, the pharmaceuticals involved. All of those things, uh, you can kind of cobble and get by, but we've gone so digital now that's it's unacceptable. If you if you pair that with another statistic, I'm not going to put it on screen, but in healthcare specifically, uh, we ask we ask the whole world what percentage of your servers had an unexpected outage, at least one last year. Now the average on global was 40 was 40 percent. Healthcare was 52% of servers had at least one unexpected outage. So you think about that combination of it hits, you know, that 76% of organizations had ransomware, we're tight on budgets, but we have a higher level of server outages. The case for using modern data protection is not a is is not a hard leap in in logic there. So people are looking to improve their uh, their data protection. A um, couple of other things. Economics are the number one driver for change, as I, as I mentioned. The number, the second is improving that quality. So the quality metrics. Mm-hmm. Can I restore on time? How quick can I restore? RTOs, RTOs. RTOs, 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 RTOs yeah. Throw out there, yeah. yeah. And then reliability. So there's there's kind of two buckets. I'm either going to change and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in modern data protection because I need to improve my economics or the quality of what I'm doing. Um, and by the way, that's flip-flopped healthcare and the rest of the world. Number one is improving quality for the world. Number one is improving and being a better use of budgets and and economics. Such an unfortunate game. Um, We wanna kind of give everything we can and budget as much as we can in healthcare towards the end user, but the end user is eventually going to benefit from investing in these other data sources, just kind of like educating the field, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It It does have a direct impact. Um, when, when we ask people to define modern data protection in, in the report as well, the thing that healthcare uh, or checked as the number one box is being able to protect their, app, their data no matter where it resides and standardizing data protection. That was a big theme. Um, also, a little bit different from what the world told us. The world in general said, get data protection to the cloud. We know healthcare, there's going to be data on-prem. It's going to be virtualized. It's going to be physical on physical servers and physical uh, architecture, uh, and it's gonna stay there. It's not gonna go away. It's not all going to the cloud, right? We hear that a lot. Yeah. Um, some other things, ransomware. Have you have you been to any event, done any event lately that ransomware has not been, I'm gonna circle back here, hasn't been a theme or, or something that people are talking about? You know, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, it's not even just the scariest point of ransomware. It is malware that has no ransom even attached to it. It's been a huge uptick in the past couple of weeks. Malicious viruses have been being written that have no comeback. They're looking for an activist, like a hackivism type of hitting you. And it's not, oh, I have insurance. I can pay that. It's, uh, my data is now gone and I have no way to recover it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's I mean, even scarier when you start to think about the it, changes we're seeing. We we have made that jump, haven't we? That where weaponized malware yeah. is, it's been there, but it's it's here now for sure, full force, isn't it? Um, other other things that 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 are interesting. Um, one of the one of the the data related issues that I thought was really intriguing was a a session that I attended uh, from one of the healthcare leaders in Germany. And he talked about uh, being able to exchange data um, and who owns data. Okay. And once you once you take control of it, you have a responsibility and obligation. There's really, I mean, there are a few sacred relationships between a person and a profession, like the medical industry. And we think uh, our HIPAA is pretty bad here. GDPR over there is a very serious uh, topic. They, it is, and and I think we're going to see a leveling of that that playing field for for all countries in the world. Um, <laughs> he was, yeah, yeah. It's about time. We all should kind of catch up with these types of standards. Yeah. One of the interesting things that he was talking about was that through a digital health initiative in Germany, they've actually approved apps on your phone mm-hmm. 
uh, as a class one and class two medical device. So your doctor could prescribe you and your insurance company would cover the cost of an application that makes you healthier. So think about anxiety disorders, any application that would change a behavior or track a level of health is now welcomed into that healthcare ecosystem of data that your doctor can can uh, lean on and can use to diagnose. Do you spend, how much time do you spend with your phone? I don't want to talk about yeah, that. It, it's always <laughs> on, it's always there. And when you combine that with things like wearables that would be able to monitor constantly, and you just, you just looked, right? Um, I've resisted, but I think, you know, for Father's Day, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have be sporting some type of watch. Um, a doctor wants to spend more time with the patient. He wants to, and she wants to draw on the data that's available. Today, they're looking at a EKG or a, um, a blood pressure measurement that happened at a single point in time. What if the doctor can collect that data from an application? and securely bring it into those records and then make diagnosis based on what happens when I'm at home dealing with my children, for instance, right? <laughs> when I'm in the doctor's office, I'm pretty calm, right? <laughs> vacation. I'm dealing, I'm dealing, you know, with my golf game or my kids, my blood pressure is off the scale. He needs to, or she needs to see that, right? But th <laughs> that's, that calls out the fact that we're going to be exchanging data. And once you take control of that, number one, you're going to have an explosion of data. We know it's coming. Um, and and you have to manage that. That data needs to be part of the permanent record. But think of those sources of data that will be coming in to healthcare that will be available in, in future years. It's hard to imagine, but it's going to be really cool. Yeah, it's it's. Speaking of data, we have a new map ready. Okay, Let's show me the map. Look at the map and see who's listening in now. I think we have the addition uh, in the United States of Wisconsin. I like when Texas gets on there. There's bigger states there to make it look. Am I seeing in Michigan off? there? Sorry, I, I have to take my glasses off. Nope, nope. Wait, nope. Okay. Michigan. We'll have to check back to see if we get someone from Michigan tuning in. Now we have Spain has joined us. Welcome, it's Spain. Bienvenido. Peru. And Peru. Nice. All right. Again, if you are just now joining us, definitely post where you're at. We'll get you added to this map and. Uh, you have some more points for me, don't you? Uh, just maybe a couple. Um, you know, one of the things that that is clear is the way we used to do data protection is not going to work going forward. Uh, the scale of it, the flexibility of it, um, the complexity of it, and the tactical deployment of it just doesn't fit the new paradigm in healthcare. You you've got to have something that brings a level of sophistication to look across all your data we need to talk about it beyond economics yeah yeah because reputation can also like these factors that aren't just numbers you can put down on a sheet i found could be the biggest drivers they didn't realize this one attack was going to be so impactful to their environment yeah yeah having that this trust. hard conversation yeah and, and it's it's that granted trust that that you're providing your health care Provided that that one-on-one -on -one relationship with with your doctor, with your clinician. How um, would you like to walk into a one-on-one -on -one relationship and not have the data from your patient, your yeah. history from your patient? Yeah. It, it, it there's it takes that takes us back almost to the dark ages compared to what we're able to do. Um, but just to just to to close out um, for healthcare, needing needing a solution that's that's cost-effective that works into the overall budget. Working uh, works within the overall architecture across the cloud on premises because we're going to be managing that data for many, 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 many years, uh, and then brings a level of automation, especially for larger organizations where data protection has to provide that recovery in an automated way that uh, that gets whole systems back up. We're not talking about single doctors here. We're yeah. talking about large-scale systems that need to be online and recover quickly. Emergency rooms. Yeah. Uh, that that business of the business uh, needs to be looked after. We're going to see legislation that comes down uh, the pike here that that requires better auditing. That says if a patient entrusts you with their data, uh, you have to prove to us what you're doing with it, and more disclosure. And for that, companies are going to have to track it better. They're going to have to have audible logs. They're going to have to automate and be able to document 
and and prove that they're meeting a regulation. So all those things is all those things drive to a new paradigm within data protection. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I said it well. Um, I understood it. Did we have any questions that have come from the chat? Anything about the data protection report? Feel free. This is our expert that you're going to have. Uh, you have that report coming out tomorrow, but it's not the same as getting the asset coming out. That's true. That's true. So I'll put up. So I, I did give you a little bit of speak, uh, sneak peek into the data that we're going to have on the healthcare cut of that data. Our full report has been out for a week now. Uh, actually, more than that, a, a couple of weeks. Um, and it's it's quite. Let, let me just kind of. Uh, trump there play that up a little bit it's it is the industry's largest study of data protection even the analysts out there recognize they don't go as wide and as deep with their research as we've done yeah. here we've run, we've run this report three consecutive years so we have a great history and, and to be able to watch trends in it and we make that available uh, i've seen it pop up in conversations where uh, our customers or partners are building use cases uh, business rationale for what they're doing in data protection uh, setting direction and strategy. It's a really, uh, and it's it's not being customers. It's a blind survey. It's independent. We we sponsor it, but we didn't do it. It's totally independent. To clarify, there is no paywall here, right? We offer this data out completely, completely no free. cost, and you'll find so many analysts, uh, professional analyst firms out there that have less of a data pool that make you go behind this paywall. They might give you a snip of this data before they let you in. All you have to do is go over, put your email address in, and we'll send you that report. Get that. And we'd love to come talk to you about it. Yeah. Uh, our our, um, our uh, customer teams, our partner teams uh, can walk you through this. It's a great it's a great guide for also having a conversation. And I'm talking not just me with a customer or a partner. It's a great conversation guide for uh, for customers or, or business, use, business cases. use cases where IT can start talking about the, impl the implications of data protection and what their peers are doing. And it's a very quick measure to see if you're falling behind or you're ahead of the curve. Yep. Both are good data points because you can either go to your boss and say, you should give me a raise. We're, <laughs> we're much better than this. Uh, or you can have the long-term... Uh, radar saying we're falling behind here. Maybe you know we need to step as, up as a company, or maybe I need to step up as a person. <laughs> Our job security, at job least security. bringing that to them so that they know. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a great it's a great way to have a, a business level conversation around data protection. So, um, did you have any closing thoughts for today, or? I, you know, I think I, I think I just uh, <laughs> shot that closing thought on the data protection. That really would be, you know, we talk about a call to action. What what would I like, you know? to see people do as far as what will benefit them. Uh, go get the report. Again, it, it it's your email. Um, and I think it will change the way people will gauge what they're doing um, and and have those you know very frank conversations uh, with their teams about how well they're they're meeting those standards. I'd say that's a great way to close. So we're going to close, close the show <laughs> by close. talking about Veeam On. Veeam On is right Veeam around the on. corner. Are uh, we going back to Vegas again? Of course we're going back to Vegas. Back to Vegas. <laughs> Who doesn't want to go back to Vegas? Uh, so I think we have a slide here to go on about. No slide on. Just the lower on. third. Okay, there all of our dates are down here at the <laughs> bottom. 16 and 19, Veeam On returns. If you haven't already registered, go register for the free virtual event and then uh, take a look at some of the, I think we saw some of those early bird specials up uh, from our website. They're going to go fast. In person and, and virtual this year again. And again, virtual is completely free and we're going to have content virtually that you're not going to get in person. Is that right? On demand. Okay. Too. And yes. then on demand for those that attend. And in some hybrid sessions, you're going to be able to see what we're doing live at the event. Fantastic. Uh, we also have a Friday show coming up this Friday that's going to go a little bit more into VMON with Kirsten Stoner and Rick Van Over as our highlights. Uh, and that's all we have for you today. Well, I'll be, I'll be listening to Rick and, and Kirsten. So. Definitely this Friday. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, wonderful talking with you. We'll see you later. Right.